No, it, uh, it's over two minutes. Okay, we're about to get started. If you can take your seats. Thank you. All right. Hey, we, the message today is going to be on time management. <laughs> <laughs> That was two minutes, way past two minutes. All right. <laughs> All right. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have some announcements for you this morning. I've got a, a few of them, but I've got one very, very, very important announcement. And so I want to make sure all eyes on me. The Seder tomorrow, we're all super excited about, will begin at six o'clock i've been saying seven six o'clock tomorrow okay so just show up and be blessed with what the lord has in store for you because it's going to be an awesome awesome time i spoke to pastor henry this morning and he's like can we can i invite people and i said i don't think so pastor henry we, we've got a lot of people um but he'll let me know if he if he needs room so we have room for 50 people. I think we have like 43 or 44 already. Um, so you, if you haven't signed up yet and you want to, let me know and we'll reserve a spot for you because we only have a couple more spots left. But it's tomorrow at what time? Okay, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, yes, the 15th. Okay, that's it. all the announcements I have. Stacy has an announcement for you. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. God is good all the time, no matter what's going on. Okay, so women, um, I think I talked about this last Sunday. I was thinking about uh, breaking up the Gospels for the women's study. Um, so I kind of prayed about it, and yeah, that's what's going to happen. Um, also spoke with some of my sisters, got some advice. So I will be breaking up the Gospels. It's, we're going to be going through the Gospels for the rest of the year and even some of next year. Um, so Matthew will be breaking up by 10, 10, and then 8. Mark will be 8, 8. Luke will be 8, 8, 8. And John will be 7, 7, 7. So we'll be deep diving. Like I feel like Wednesdays we deep dive so much. I don't need to deep dive, but... We're gonna be deep diving, so I wanna make sure that I cover everything, that everybody is able to share their revelation and it doesn't go way over two hours. So that's what we come up with. Um, I will be sending out that email today with a schedule as well as the questions that we're gonna discuss on April 27th, I believe, Saturday, April 27th over Zoom. Um, if you're not signed up with the women's ministry and you wanna sign up, please let me know. All I need is your email and I can get all that information to you. Also, on a side note, um, I had mentioned maybe like a month ago that me and Sandy were going to put together, well, mostly Sandy, I'm just helping her. <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing her. Um, we're putting together Backyard Kids Club. It's like, um, I guess, like a Bible study camp thing. Uh, it's going to be a one-week thing for the, I think it's the second week of June, first or second week of June, first First week of June, Monday through Friday, it's going to be about four hours a day, um, drop your kid off, um, and we're going to probably from like 10 to 2. We're still going over the details, but it's going to be around 10 to 2. Um, then we're going to um, we're going to have skits played by Kea, Happy, and Jason. <laughs> I didn't talk to him about it, so yeah, he's going to play some skits. We're going to open up with scripture, prayer, worship, have a little bit of choreography, dance, get into a Bible study. We're going to break them up into two groups, um, do Bible studies, um, ages 4 to 10, um, have some arts and crafts, some snacks, some lunches. And then on our final day, Friday, we're hoping to get like some kind of big uh, bouncy castle water slide for the kids and do maybe like a barbecue or something. Um, so the kids of our church are definitely welcome. We've asked the kids to invite a friend. Um, um, adults are all looking like, can we come? <laughs> yeah. 
you can if you want to help. <laughs> um, and with that being said, um, we are asking for volunteers. Um, and what we mean by volunteers is if the Lord puts it on your heart to serve in some way, just come to me and Sandy and let us know like what you're willing to do. Um, but we are going to be sending out a prayer calendar next month because everybody can pray, right? So a prayer calendar for the month of May to pray for the leaders, to pray for the kids, to pray for the event, to pray for the church, to pray for the body, because we are the church. Um, so yeah, just pray. And you can start praying now if you want to, because that would be awesome. <laughs> Love you. Skits, huh? No, no, I was growing my hair out for John the Baptist, I thought. All right, um, so we have a few more announcements for you. Our next one is from our sister, Chris. Thank you, Chris. God loves you. Uh, Monday, people will be getting together to pray for you. If you have any prayer requests, you can put them in the bowl back there by Lori. Um, there's some paper, just anything you can scribble it on so they can pray specifically for your needs. Uh, Bible study, well, Seder, right? Six o'clock. I think you were stuck on the sevens, yeah? Six o'clock. And um, if it's okay with Pastor Henry, we're going to stream it on YouTube Live. So if you're subscribed to YouTube Live, our New Hope Volcano channel, then you could get a notification when we go live on there good reason to subscribe we have 102 subscribers by the way yeah yeah um so if it's okay with him then we'll be on youtube live tomorrow for that and then wednesday's bible study five o'clock right here with dinner and hula thursday night kiala said that if you want to join hula it's good to let her know so then she can text you if for some reason it gets canceled or something so if you're interested in hula let kiala know if you're already dancing, you're probably already on that text message list. Uh, Friday morning, the Yard Ninjas will be here at 8 a.m. And then Friday night, we have Celebrate Recovery. We usually have more cheering for Celebrate Recovery. Um, <laughs> uh, there's pamphlets back there about all of the many hurts, habits, and hangups that we cover at Celebrate Recovery, which is anything. And um, it is anonymous and completely confidential, so we do suggest you come and check us out. People who have say that it's really been helping them. Uh, men's ministry is the third Saturday, which is the 20th. That's this one coming up, right? Okay, 9 a.m. right out there. Women's ministry is always the last Saturday, only on Zoom. That's the 27th. <laughs> Thrift shop will be open on the 17th. The 17th? No, the 20th. The, the 20th, no problem. Everybody's stuck on the 17th. That will be Wednesdays, the 17th. So just be aware, be in prayer on that day because everybody's stuck on that day for some reason. Anyway, um, yes, the thrift shop will be open on Saturday, the 20th from 9 to 12, and then starting the first and third Saturdays. Is the Master Life class meeting today? Yes, at noon, right across in the building if you are signed up for that. Um, we always have a Christmas fair in December, and then we toy with having a spring fair. We are not, I am not, doing a spring fair this year. If anybody is interested in doing a spring fair or a summer fair, I can tell you how to organize it. It's a fun event, um, but I am not organizing it just because. Enough going on, I know, right? Okay, um, we are currently on Zoom and on YouTube Live. If you want more information about our church, what's going on, all those things, we are also at newhopevolcano.com. I send out a weekly email to everybody with the message notes and who's preaching. Oh, speaking of um, Zoom and YouTube Live, you know, um, people who are members and then they're traveling, they like to, to come on Zoom or YouTube Live. This morning I met somebody on Zoom who's planning to move here, who was, ch you know, checking out the church ahead of time. I know, what a great idea. I thought that was awesome. 
Um, so you can always share our um, the email that I send you. Just share that with your friends and relatives, and um, you know they can come on from anywhere. And all glory and honor are his. Mahalo. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Yeah, 102 subscribers. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I also wanted to say that we have had, a, over the three years of our YouTube channel, 8,876 views and 1,368 watch hours. Wow. So if you're somebody who pays attention to YouTube analytics, that's pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. That's awesome. I don't know how you guys do it. I can't handle the sound of my voice. <laughs> No, it's an awesome, awesome thing. It, you, we listen to it for worship a lot of times too. You know, we got all those awesome, catchy songs that we sing here on Sunday. You can sing them throughout the week if you like at, on our uh, YouTube channel. It's New Hope Volcano. You just type that in and uh, Pastor Ray's picture will come up. And then all of our sermons and all of our, we have a couple of different things on there as well that you can check out jam sessions and other services. And hopefully the Seder will be on there as well. Um, so we also have a website, newhopevolcano.com. If you're subscribed to it, then you know you, we, uh, there's blogs up every week. You can uh, go to the website and check that out. Uh, but there's also a place where you can give online. On the top of the home page, there's a click down button that you can click down, and it says give online. And this morning, if you would like to give a t uh, an offering or your tithe, you can do it that way by clicking on give online. You enter your information. You do it one time, it's very safe, very secure, and you can give your tithe or your offering that way. If you're in the building and you'd like to give your tithe or your offering, we have an offering bow in the back there where our sister Laurie is sitting. You can drop your tithe or your offering in there that way if you see fit. And of course, we say all of that just to say that if you are visiting us for the first time, please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you so grateful for all that you do in our lives, Lord. Many of us go through so many different things in our lives, but the one thing remains the same, that you are always with us caring for our needs and providing for us in each and every way, in every aspect of our lives, we can turn to you when we are in need. And we are so grateful for that, Lord. We thank you for the love that you have for us. We thank you for leading us and guiding us through this life, Lord. This morning, we want to lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance and we pray that we use it according to your will. We have been so blessed by you, Lord. So blessed to be able to come into this building to worship you. So blessed for the youth group to be used to, to help the children to know you more. So blessed for the time of fellowship that we can share in this place. We give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise, Lord. And we thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes. Um, so, you know, if you're watching the news at all, you might have heard a little bit that there's a lot of things going on in Israel, yes? And as I was asking the Lord to reveal the opening uh, scripture this morning, I was searching for something in the Bible to speak about that. And there was something about that in the book of Psalms that we should pray for Israel and what's going on over there. Um, I think the other John, Big John, he sent me a text message and his niece and nephew are in Jerusalem right now. And he was showing video footage of just rockets and bombs going off and 
Um, it's such an it's such a surreal thought or feeling to see it. You know, I can't imagine to see it with your own eyes. Um, but we'll definitely keep them in prayer, and and we'll pray for them this morning as well. Um, and Pastor Henry will come and share a whole bunch of information about Israel. That's what he usually does. He comes to give us the updates and the information on what's happening in Israel. But this year he's going to uh, present the Seder, but he will still talk to us about everything that's going on there. Uh, it's pretty awesome. So, I have been blessed once again to share the Word of God with you this morning. We are continuing on our journey, a series entitled The Romans Road, where, where we'll be covering a handful of scriptures that people can use to share the gospel with others. And it's, God is so good, it's so amazing. Last week, Sunday, I, I was blessed with the opportunity to perform a wedding for one of my old cooks. One of my cooks that used to cook for me at the Hilo Yacht Club was getting married, and he asked me if I could marry him and his bride. And so I did that, and it was at the Hilo Yacht Club. And so <laughs> I haven't been there since I left, which is exactly 10 years ago, because I left when Isaiah was born. And um, he invited a couple of our friends and, and other cooks and employees from the restaurant, and he sat us all at the same table. And we got to eat a nice meal. It was excellent. Remember I told you guys I always thought when I left the restaurant that they would shut down, right? But no, they're fine. They're doing well. The food is good. The service was good. But what was so awesome, what was even more awesome is that another one of my cooks who, uh, who gave me a bad time, you know, when he was working for me, he gave me a bad time. But I was sitting at the table with him and he gave me a bad time because when he, we met, I was just starting to come to the Lord. I was just starting to come to the Lord. So he saw me before Christ, and then he saw me, he saw my transformation in Christ. And he was one of those, those guys, he wasn't too happy about that transformation. He didn't like that transformation. He liked the old me. He liked the way I was. And so, you know, you know, uh, I, I got saved and I got excited about it and I started talking about it at work and then I started playing Christian music and not everybody was on board for that. But he was sitting at my table. And so, I, again, I asked him, so, have you come to know the Lord yet? And he said, I haven't, but I'm much more open to it now. That's what he said. And so... It was so great because I've, I've been putting this message together about the Romans road and I said, hey, this is a perfect opportunity to, to take him down the Romans road, right? And so I was able to do that to a certain extent. He did eventually put up a roadblock. <laughs> and so uh, we left it at that and now we're texting back and forth. But he was somebody who I knew um, would have a hard time coming to the Lord because his heart was so hardened when I knew him. But in speaking to him, I could see that his heart had softened. But I just thought it was so awesome that the Lord allowed me an opportunity like that. Um, and so we're texting, and I'm, you know what the first scripture I sent him, right? Romans 12, 2, right? Do not be conformed. And so, um, and so we're going back and forth. But anyway... That leads us to this morning's message where we will be continuing down the road. Uh, for those of you who were not here last week, I'll try to catch you up real briefly. And it's not that difficult because like we said, the Romans road is a handful of scriptures found in the book of Romans then that can help lead someone to salvation. And last week we covered the first two scriptures, Romans 3.23, where it says, For all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And pair that with Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, where it says, the wages of sin is death. So we are all sinners, and the wages of sin is death. And we establish that we all sin, we all fall short of the glory of God or the goodness of God, and sin separates us from God, and we are all in need of a Savior. And we dug a little deeper uh, into that, and we address three ways to deal with sin in our own lives, right? Number one was 
reveal, reveal the sin through confession. Number two was to repent from your sin. And number three was to turn to God. Um, if you want to catch up even better, if that sounds interesting to you, you can check out our YouTube page and you can hear the message there. This morning's message is entitled, No Condemnation, What It Means to Be Justified. Well, we will be covering a few more scriptures from the book of Romans and the Romans Road. And if you remember, we left off last week uh, reading from Romans 3.23, and we read it in its full context, okay? Because we know that it says we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, and we can all agree to that. But in its full context, here's what it says. For we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are all justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. See, there's a lot more to that scripture. It's not just about sinning and falling short, but it's also about the justification um, by grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So we establish that we sin and fall short, but the Apostle Paul tells us here that we are justified freely by His grace. The next scripture as part of the Roman, Romans road comes from Romans chapter 5 in verse 8 in your notes. And the word says, But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, when sharing the gospel, uh, one of the biggest put back, pushbacks that I receive is that that sounds good. That sounds great that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But before I can receive that, I still need to fix some things up in my life. I still got to figure things out in my life. And you can fill in the blank. I got to stop partying. I got to stop drinking. I got to stop smoking. I need to get my act together. I got to start coming to church before I can receive Christ. There's always some kind of pushback because they believe that there is something that they need to do in order to get right with God first. They believe that they are so at odds with God and they were, they're right. We all were at one time. They say things like, the church might fall down if I walk in the door. Or they say things like, I might burst into flames if I walk in there. And these are, this is actual conversations I've had with people. And it was me saying those things, actually, before. <laughs> That's my testimony. I would say that, that the church would fall down if I walk in. So the Bible doesn't say that only once we clean up our act, or get our lives together, and have everything all figure out, figured out, then you can receive salvation. No, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible does say that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Even in our sin, even in our mess, even all that we're going through in our lives, Christ died for us still, knowing that we were sinners. Jesus meets us exactly where we are. There's no checklist of things you need to do or need to get done to be accepted by Christ. No, when we make the decision to surrender our will for His will, and when we decide to put our faith and our trust in Jesus and accept Him as our Lord and Savior, we are freely justified. Freely justified. Amen and hallelujah. That's awesome, but what does it mean to be justified? What does it mean exactly? The dictionary defines uh, justified as declared or being made righteous in the sight of God. Declared or being made righteous in the sight of God. In your notes this morning, we'll be speaking about what it means to be justified by the blood of Jesus. And we'll begin by starting with number one. Being justified with Jesus means that our debt is paid in full. Our debt is paid in full. The Old Testament covenant, covenant requires a sacrifice of an animal, a perfect spotless sacrifice of an animal for the atonement of sin. 
there is a debt that is owed to God, and he is a just God, and so there is a price that needs to be paid for our sins. In the New Testament, God entered into a new covenant with his people, the covenant of grace, where Jesus became the sacrifice. And Paul writes to the church in Corinth to explain that their, their debt was paid in full by the blood of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, the Amplified Version says, You and I were bought with a price. You were, you were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus, and you were made his own. So then, honor and glorify God with your bodies. Again, the Romans road is intended to lead the lost to salvation. But again, I would like to address the believers in the room. And I pray that we really understand the gravity of what has been do done for us. God made he, Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin so that we may be the righteousness of God. That is such an awesome statement and that is such an awesome thing to have happen a price was paid for our lives and it was paid in full so we are fully justified and we are fully sanctified through the sacrifice of jesus and god now sees us as righteous can you imagine that god now sees us as righteous because of what jesus did Jesus took the burden of our filthy rags and he gave us his righteousness. And so Paul says, because of that, because of that amazing, awesome thing, we should now honor God and glorify God with our bodies, with our lives, that everything we do should bring honor and glory to God because of what God did for us. He sent his son to pay the price. The debt that we owed was paid in full, and there was no need for any more sacrifices. Sometimes, though, we like to take the burden back from Jesus. Sometimes we like to take the burden back for ourselves. When we sin, we feel like there's a penance to pay. We owe God something. Something needs to be paid back. Like we can make it up to God. Sometimes we feel like I sin, so now I got to do X, Y, and Z. Like by our own strength and our own doing, we will appear righteous to God again. And he will forgive our sins again. So I can begin to walk in the spirit again. Sometimes we, we think that way. That line of, of thinking is that I sin and so now I have to do something so that I can be forgiven again, even though I've already been forgiven, so that I can be seen as righteous by God. And we need to understand that there is nothing that we could ever do on our own to appear righteous to God. There is nothing we could ever do to appear righteous to God. We may appear righteous to others, and we can definitely deceive ourselves with self-righteousness. We can definitely do that. But we will never fool God. And we will never be right with God by insulting Him. We insult God when we try to earn forgiveness or right standing on our own. We insult Him because He already sent Jesus to pay the price. It's done. It's done. But we take it back sometimes and we think, there's things that we can do that we need to do to be in right standing with God. We insult him because what we're saying is that Jesus' sacrifice wasn't enough. That's not enough. It takes Jesus plus what I can do, plus what I have to offer. And I know that this sounds like elementary teaching. Like we all know this. We know Jesus paid the price. We know that it's not by our doing. It's, it's elementary but we still fall into this trap sometimes. We still sometimes will get in an argument with a coworker or a boss or a family member. We'll mistreat our spouse. 
We'll miss church for a couple weeks. We'll stop reading our Bibles for a while. And then, after we realize what it feels like to be separated from God, because our God, our, our sin separates us from God, because, because of guilt is why we feel separated from God. Then we begin to think about, what can I do to get back in right standing with God? We begin to say, okay, I'm going to start reading my Bible. I'm going to start praying. And then, now it's okay for me to come back to church because I'm in right standing with God. And the truth is, the only thing we can ever do to get right with God is to seek Jesus. That's the only thing we can do. Look for Him in everything that we do. Reach out for Him, grab hold of Him, and don't let go of Him as if your life depended on it. Because it does. Don't fall in for the traps of the enemy. And remember last week we spoke about how sin makes promises to you. And to the extent that you sin depends on how much you believe those promises, which are lies. And so, um, don't get caught up in what the world does. Don't, get, don't be deceived. And definitely don't conform to the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23 in your notes, the word says, God paid a high price for you, so do not be enslaved by the world. Don't be trapped. Don't be caught up in the world because God has paid a price for you. You are His. A high price was paid for each and every one of us. And that is an understatement, I believe. Paul is saying, remember what was done for you. And remember, Jesus said, it is finished. Do not fall into the traps of the enemy. The victory is won. So we shouldn't be walking around in defeat because that's what the world wants from us. The victory is, is won. Not in your notes, but uh, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 18, uh, Paul also says, Our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed to us. When we walk around and we look and we have this scripture etched in our hearts, we can get through anything. We, can, we are not defeated. We have victory. We are more than conquerors. Our present sufferings are not worth even comparing to the glory that will be revealed to us. Amen. So a price was paid, and that is amazing. And it leads us to number two in, in our notes. The price was paid, and number two, and it's free of charge. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Grace, the definition is undeserved favor of God. The Apostle Paul makes it very clear here in this verse, by grace we have been saved and not by your own doing. And if you didn't quite get it, he's going on to explain, it is a gift of God and not of works. Our salvation is not earned through works. Our salvation is not earned through works. Let's all take a sigh of relief. Whew. Thank goodness. <laughs> Paul says it's not a result of works so that no one may boast. Can you imagine what you would have to do to earn salvation? There's nothing that you can do. It would be exhausting and you would still never achieve it. I love that he pointed this out. I love that Paul pointed this out because as some of you may know, my love language is words of affirmation. And I say that because I like to hear that I'm doing good and I'm quick to point out all the wonderful things that I'm doing so that I can get credit or praise. And you know, I just had an opportunity to work on this on Friday when Stacy called me at work and she said, the car won't start. And so I ran home from work and I went down and I jumped Stacy's car and I came back and I didn't say anything at all. I didn't tell her, you know, you left the light on, which she did because I got up at 4.30 and the light was on on the inside. I didn't say anything. 
And I came to work, and then she came to work, and she was so grateful that I came and I rescued her and I helped her. And she knows that that's my love language, so she gave me a whole bunch of love. And believe me, when I'm sharing this with you, I'm ministering to myself because it doesn't matter how much we read our Bibles or pray or how many small groups we are part of or how many days I'm here in church. We do all of those things for other reasons, but not for salvation. We do those things for other very important reasons, but not for salvation. But if we deceive ourselves in thinking, oh, I read my Bible every day, I pray every day, I come to church Sundays and Wednesdays, and I do all of these things, and so this is how I know I'm going to heaven, you are absolutely wrong. You are deceived. Those things do not grant you salvation. All of it wouldn't be enough to earn your way into heaven. All that you are doing is not enough to earn your way into heaven. And I've, I have been very careful, uh, and I am, to be sure that everything I do, that I'm doing it with the right heart, that I'm not doing these things for the praises of man or try, trying to get noticed by God that look at what I'm doing. Look, look at what I'm doing. It's, it's not about me. It's about the goodness and kindness of God. It's about His grace and His mercy, and it's about the love of God. You know, those things I'm saying, I, 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 me, 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 I want praise, that's all pride. That's a message for another day, but it's all pride. And, and I know I, I can't be the only one out of 60 of us that struggle with it, but I'm, I'm honest with it. I, I, I reveal it because I know it's something that I wrestle with and I fight with is pride. But when it comes to salvation, all of that pride has to be set aside. All of that pride has to be put down, put away, and set aside because it's not about what you do. It's about what you believe in. Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. This is from um, New American Standard. The word says, But when the kindness of God, it's His kindness, our Savior, and His love, it's His love, for mankind appeared, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing and regenerating, uh, regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. It's all about Him and not about us free of charge, free of charge by His goodness, His love, and His mercy. Isaiah 53 and verse 5, the word says, But He was pierced for our transgressions, and He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him, and by His wounds we are healed. Everything upon Jesus, our punishment, our sin, our peace, all comes from Jesus. By His wounds, we become whole. We become spiritually healed from spiritual death to eternal life. And we did nothing at all to earn that. Nothing at all to earn that. And this free gift of grace comes with number three, a lifetime guarantee. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. Woohoo! <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 12. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. When Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice, there's no more sacrifice that needs to be made. We have redemption. And the redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin. We were once separated from God because of sin. Some of us enemies of God, but we have been justified or made righteous in the sight of God because of what Christ did on the cross for us. And not only that, but we didn't do anything to deserve it. It was freely given to us by God's grace, God's undeserved, unmerited favor was poured upon us 
uh, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Peter th chapter 3, verse 18, the word says, For Christ died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. There is only one payment that will ever need to be made. Once for all and for all time. This sacrifice, this sacrifice promises everlasting life to all who believe. Eternal life forever and ever in the presence of the Father. A lifetime guarantee that we can count on. And the only receipt we need to have to claim this is the blood of Jesus. Because that is what paid for your and my salvation. And we will speak more about this next week as we reach the end of our journey on the Romans road. But before we close this morning, uh, as a quick review, I just wanted to cover some of the scriptures that we went over in the Romans road. Because it is intended to bring those to an understanding, those who are lost, to an understanding of salvation. And so Romans 3.23, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Romans 5.8, God showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then I'll share with you one more scripture this morning on the Romans road. Sometimes this scripture is shared at the end. Because if you Google it or look it up, not all of the scriptures are exactly the same, but the concept is the same. And sometimes people share this scripture at the end. But I like to give them the good stuff in the beginning. I like to give them the up front, you know. Um, and it, scripture is from Romans chapter 8 and in verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When we have come to the point that we understand that we have sinned and we understand we need a Savior and we understand that Christ died for us even while we were sinners, I like to share that once you come to understand that and accept Christ, now there is no condemnation for you. And the reason I like to share it up front is because isn't that what you want? Isn't that what you want? To not be at odds with God. You want to be free of condemnation. There is no condemnation, none. The only way that you can feel condemned once you have received Christ is that you believe that God will charge, your, charge to your account what Jesus paid for. That's the only way you can feel condemned is if you believe that God will charge your account for what Jesus already paid for. And if that's not how you feel, then you don't feel condemned you feel guilty. And if that's the case, then that's okay because we can deal with that. But there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you feel overwhelmed to the point of saying, I can't do this, what you're really saying is, I haven't found the right combination of guilt and works to make myself feel righteous to make myself comply. I can't do this means you have, haven't found that right combination of things to make yourself comply. But what you really should mean is, I just can't do this. And don't stop there. You go on and you say, I just can't do this. That is why Christ had to die in the flesh, take my sins, and be resurrected for my justification. Send His Spirit to dwell inside of me, to empower me, so that I would accomplish that which I cannot accomplish by a power that is not my own. That is the true statement of a believer. I can't do this, but with Christ I can. With Christ I can. I can do all things. We can't do it on our own. The only way to hold on to condemnation is if you believe that Jesus didn't pay sufficiently or Christ was not worth enough. That's the only way that you can feel condemnation. 
If you are in Christ Jesus, you are freely justified and there is no condemnation for you. Your debt is paid in full, free of charge, and it comes with a lifetime guarantee. And it reminds me of an old hymn that we've been singing in the house, and, and it's been updated, actually. It, it, it's an old hymn that they kind of made new, and, and maybe we can play it one day. But it goes, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Amen. If we can bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Your word that helps lead us and guide us through this life. We thank you for the free gift of salvation found in Christ Jesus. What an unbelievable gift it is. And I pray that none of us take it for granted, Lord. I pray that we can all come to understand what has been done for us. And in turn, we can honor and glorify you with our lives, the way that we live, the way that we love others, the way that we put other people ahead of ourselves, the way that we put you first in our lives. We place you at the head of the table and everything else falls into place after that. It's when things get mixed up and out of order is when things start to go wrong. But when we put you first, Oh, Lord, that's when we are in your will. And I pray that we can all understand that, that we can offer ourselves as living sacrifices, that we know that what Christ did for us is so beyond words, beyond words, Lord. And we thank you for that, Father. Congregation, we've come to the point of the message where we'd like to offer those who have not had an opportunity to receive one this morning, to receive an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. After all, that is what the Romans Road is about. It's about exposing the sin in our lives that opens us up to the fact that we need a Savior, a Savior who would give himself up for us even while we were still sinners. And so if that's you this morning, if you've never had a relationship with Jesus and you'd like to begin one now, maybe you've had a tugging at your heart, maybe you could sense that God is trying to draw you near, but you've never been open, your heart has never been open to receiving Him, but maybe this morning is that time. I want to offer you uh, a prayer to say, asking Jesus to come into your life. And of course, we preface that to say that this is a prayer asking Jesus to come into your life. But true salvation is granted when you believe. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so we can say these words, but you have to have the, the right heart to receive salvation. But we want to help you this morning. For those of you who are in the building and you know the Lord, but maybe you haven't had such a good relationship with Him like you once had, and you want to go back to that. You want to be in strong fellowship with the Lord. I want to ask you too to say this prayer. And for those who are walking boldly with God, I want to ask you to say this prayer as an edification, an encouragement for our brothers and sisters who are saying this prayer for the first time. For the book of Romans... And I'll give you a, a spoiler that next week we'll be ending our journey in the book of Romans and we will end here in Romans chapter nine, uh, 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so this morning we're going to help you with the words, but you have something to do as well. You have to believe in your hearts. And if that's you this morning then please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank, you Jesus. thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm, a I'm a sinner. I have done lots of things, done lots of things. On, my on my own. I have not always, have not always asked, for asked for your help or your advice. I want to change that now. 
this morning, this morning I, recognize you I recognize you as my forgiver, as my forgiver. and I want to follow you as my, leader. as my leader. Come into my life, Come into my life. and as best as, I know how, best as I know how, for as long as I know how, as as I, know how I, will I will follow you. So now I say, so that you can hear me, so that I can hear me, so that my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me, Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for those who have said that prayer for the first time. For those who are seeking you, Lord, your word says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And as, as they are taking these steps to draw near to you, Lord, I pray that you make your presence known on, on their hearts. You allow the Holy Spirit to touch them this morning, Lord. We thank you so much for this time, Father. We thank you for the food that's been provided. We pray that it be nourishing to our minds and our bodies. We pray your presence over our time of fellowship after service. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel, Lord, as your word says to pray for Jerusalem. And we just pray your will to be done, Lord, your good, pleasing, and perfect will. We love you so much, Father. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. And we pray this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. Right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know who wrote this lyric. I think Randy might have wrote it. But I was thinking about reading Romans 8.1 and I thought, no, 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 I don't sin anymore. I'm tired of waking up on the floor. What, did you write that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, this marks the formal conclusion to our Sunday morning service. We're very honored that you came to spend your uh, morning here with us. Uh, if you are ready for refreshments, you can exit through the door there on my left. The refreshments already set up. If you are uh, wanting to sing, you can stay in the room and you can sing. You can uh, sing as you go out, whatever you prefer. If you're going to head out and take advantage of the rest of the day, I want to caution you as I do in most weeks. When you get to Highway 11, be sure you check cars coming up and down the hill since they move very, very quickly. Whatever you decide to do, God bless you and have a great rest of your week. Be bold and be strong. The Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold and be strong. The Lord thy God is with thee. And do not be afraid. And do not be dismayed. We're walking in faith and victory. We're walking in faith and victory. We're walking in faith and victory for the Lord. Thy God is with me. We're gonna run to the camp. Tell all the people get ready. Get ready. We're gonna run to the camp. Tell all the people get ready. Get ready. Are you ready to take the stand? Are you ready to take a stand for the Lord? Be bold, be strong, the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold, be strong, the Lord thy God is with thee. Bye.